I was actually bar mitzvah in Harrogate synagogue. Um, and uh, uh, as I said, my father's uh, business took him to Halifax. And we, uh, I was very active as insofar as one could be active in the Harrogate community, Jewish community. I was a, a very enthusiastic member of Habonim, not a very good Jewish student, and I don't think I did my bar mitzvah terribly well. Um, but when we came to live in Bradford, really everything changed because Harrogate had a very small Jewish community, um, and it was a very opulent Jewish community. Our family was probably the poor, one of the poorest families in the town. Um, and we, um, we came to live in Bradford and it was uh, in my early teens like moving to a different planet. Uh, Harrogate it, it, it then was a very, very small, rural, undeveloped place. There were hardly any cars. Um, and it was very quiet, sleepy little town, nowhere near the very fashionable upmarket town it is today. So when I came to live in Bradford with my parents, it was, as I say, a, a culture shock of the highest order, not least of which I was immediately taken into the bosom of a big, thriving, wonderful Jewish community. Um, my father was never very religious and not really interested in his religion at all. Um, <clears throat> my mother a lot more so. But um, we immediately uh, joined the Boland Street Synagogue um, because my parents developed some friendships there. And uh, that was so much nicer than the Orthodox, I thought, at that time, because a lot of the service was in English. Everybody was very, very friendly. The rabbi at that time was Rabbi Dr. Beenheim. Um, and that synagogue was the one that was established by um, uh, Ozzy Stroud's father. And uh, the Strouds were there. That's probably where I first got friendly with Richard and his friends. But um, we were immediately, my brother and I, involved in a big Jewish community. The Bradford Jewish community in those days was um, Eastern European um, and principally in the textile industry. They weren't manufacturers as such, they were mostly middlemen of one sort or another. Um, but they were all much more liberal than the traditional conservative Orthodox Jews, much more easygoing, very friendly, very warm-hearted. They made my parents incredibly welcome. They had a social life that they'd never had before, um, and they were always very, very nice to me. And uh, it played a very, very formative part of my life. I subsequently became the treasurer of Boland Street Synagogue in later years when I'd established my business, so I kept that going. I also gave a lot of money to it. Uh, indirectly, indirectly. I personally paid for it all to be redecorated as it is today. That all was paid for by me um, and, uh, and done by me. And I did that many, many years ago. And I love that synagogue and I still love it. And I think for it to disappear um, because of the declining community as a building would be a great loss. Albert Waxman and a number of other um, young Jewish men uh, escaped the Nazis and they had a hostel and that was run by Mr. and Mrs. Eager. Mr. and Mrs. Eager had a son and a daughter. Um, the daughter was Ruth, who was my auntie. She married my uncle, Geoffrey. Um, and that that hostel is a, that's a film, there is a film about that. It's on YouTube. Pardon? It's on YouTube. Yeah. Well, Ruth uh, was uh, very, very much um, part of that, as her parents were. And that, uh, all the men from the hostel, I think there were about a dozen, I think they all became hugely successful. Uh, at one, at one business or another. Not, not all of them, but most of them, which Albert's probably the best example. Well, as I say, it was a very friendly, um, somewhat hierarchical um, community. Uh, the, I think the, um, uh, the Reform Synagogue, Bowling Street, were probably looked upon in some respects as poor relations to the Orthodox um, 
uh, <clears throat> Jewish community where all the big mill owners were um, and the more opulent, more established Ashkenazi uh, families. But there was a bit of friendly rivalry, but never anything other than that. Um, and everybody knew everybody. Everybody. It was a very uh, close knit, lovely community. We even had at one time our own Jewish shop in uh, in Bradford. There was a butcher's shop at one point. That was before my time, actually. I know there was a Jewish shop on Manningham Lane, um, <clears throat> and they had bagels every Sunday morning. I greatly mourn the fact that Bradford, as a great Jew, and I really do mean great Jewish community, is now. Um, effectively died off and there were some wonderful characters some great businessmen um, and they were responsible I think in no small part for the prosperity of Bradford for many years uh, the uh, Orthodox synagogue is nice enough in its own way I suppose but it's nowhere near as historic as Bowdoin Street and I hope that sustains itself. Just know that it's intrinsically very, very important. It was nominated, uh, I think, as a heritage site yeah. and turning into some form of museum um, or um, a place where people can go and, uh, and, and see probably some of the stuff that went on in Bradford in those years. They were wonderful years. I've got very, I'm very grateful to Bradford and very grateful to the Bradford Jewish community. There were, there were tailors. Right. So there, there was, obviously, mm, Bradford yeah. being the mill, yeah. a, a mill industry and a cotton industry and a wool and textile industry, Bradford was the, the perfect place to be for them. It um, might be funny, <laughs> funny fine book. Right. She had a shop on John Street. Um, tailor, we spoke tailors. She lived above the shop. And she has made the uh, suits for quite famous people as well, so Anyone I can't know? remember them now. <laughs> it's Bruce Forsyth. Oh, Bruce Forsyth, yeah. The, and it was the a presenters comedian from the well. BBC's. And mm. She was born 1887 in Glasgow. And when she first lived, when they first came to Bradford, they lived on Barry Street, mm. I think. And they, they had two houses next to each other. So one was probably a shop and one was, one was the working area and one was the house. And then they moved to John Street, which was the open air market. They employed machinists and, right. and tailors and sewers. So I think at one point they had, on one of the censuses, they've got three, three young men from Eastern Europe. All probably yeah. Jewish, Goldsteins and yeah. very, very Jewish sounding surnames. And they were all from places like Latvia, Poland, Lithuania. Mm. And so they, they obviously could afford to employ staff and, and have, have them living there yeah. as boarders. From what I can gather, from what I've been told, Harry and Fanny, brother and sister, they fell out. They had, a, they had a bit of a family feud between them because Fanny was very, very religious and Harry wasn't. I think Orthodox. Just a memory, I, I really. Because we didn't you know, follow it. Because we didn't be around here. And Auntie didn't go far. Didn't go far. She used to take me to the bank. Made us save as money. But she never went. I used to go Saturday afternoon. So she probably came Saturday morning. I don't know where, which synagogue they, they went to. The synagogue membership books is so vast. Yeah, it's where they are. Well, when we buried her as well, they must have known because it's a different burial, isn't it? Well, Orthodox. From, and from research on the cemeteries, there's Feinbergs and Nathans in the, yeah. the Skullmore Cemetery. Yeah, there yeah is. that's where my auntie is. They're, all, they're all in there, apart from Harry. And if it's at the bottom, it's the, if it's the Orthodox. If it's at the top, by the Orwell, you know the building? Yeah, then. And it's in a farm. Ours are all opposite the, the school. Right, it's on the bottom. On the, on the bottom side of the graveyard. So that's, the, that's the Orthodox That's the Orthodox side. So the will, the will have been. So they probably didn't come here. I think it's hard if you've not been brought up as, as Jewish. Yeah. It's hard to to change into having a, a Jewish life. Mm. I've not been brought up Jewish, but I, I follow a lot of the Jewish customs. Yeah. But it's hard to to make that adjustment because we've not we've yes. not been brought up that way.
through the Textile Society, I met Roy Stroud. And Roy said, why haven't we ever seen you in synagogue? Mm. And I said, well, I, I wasn't aware there were some synagogues nearby. Mm -hmm. And um, he invited me to the Hanukkah service here in the Reformed Synagogue, which uh, Edward and my children and I attended. I can still see myself sitting where I sat. And then he said, why not come home with us? And home was actually at his mother's. So we went to his mother's house. His mother was, I think, called Clara. Roy's. Roy's mother, Roy Stroud's mother. So in a way, it is Roy who brought me back to Judaism, and I owe him a great debt, really. Mm -hmm. And I started very slowly coming to synagogue, relearning my Hebrew, and for a long time was very happy. Within a very short period of time, I was on the council here and enjoyed that. And my husband, Edward, very much encouraged me. He sometimes came with me. And I even took services and took the scrolls out of the ark, which to me was unheard of for a woman to do that. So it was a bit alien. But I did enjoy being part of the community. And then very slowly and gradually, I got disenchanted and f discovered through my installation as president of Bene Brit that there was actually an Orthodox synagogue. And we had a few lunches in the Orthodox synagogue. And I approached Albert Waxman and asked if they ever had members who had married out. Yeah. And he said, yes, they did. And I would be very welcome but he encouraged me to think about it very carefully because he said, once you make that step, you can't go back. And I promised I would think about it, but actually I'd already made up my mind. But I took the time and thought about it very carefully because I was worried to upset Roy because he and his wife had been very kind to me. I felt that going behind his back, I was almost betraying him, although I wasn't really. And anyway, the day came that I wrote my letter to Albert to say, could I become a member at the Orthodox Synagogue? My initial intention was to stay a member here, but realized that that was really a, a non, not, a, not a good idea. It's and fun. once they, I had a letter from the, the Hebrew congregation, Bradford Hebrew congregation, that I was accepted, mm. I then wrote to Roy. I've never looked back, and there is a fondness for the Reformed Synagogue, for the people here. Mm. And, uh, you know, Rudy and the Fabians and the Dysons and indeed Solomons. Yeah. yeah. They in particular. And of course, before that, the Ellingers and the, yeah. and the Rot Rothschilds, you know, especially the Strausses. I mean, I would put those first, actually, because it was through Roy that I, I came back to Judaism. And I am, for, well, as I said before, I'm really grateful to Roy for that. Because I, I started studying and, uh, you know, when really, I couldn't possibly read straight from the scrolls. Mm -hmm. So probably Walter or somebody, I think it was Walter actually, Walter Rothschild, he used to give you, um, uh, I suppose, a copy from the Chumash. And then, then you, you, I would learn, learn it by heart and literally do my piece, which, which was amazing if you think about it. Mm -hmm. And, and I think an advantage with the service itself is that part is in English and part is in, in Hebrew. So it's much easier to follow than in the Orthodox, because although I can read it relatively fluently, I have absolutely no idea what I'm reading unless I read the English. It was special, because in the Orthodox synagogue you don't get that opportunity. Most of the Orthodox synagogue members of course, knew each other 30, 40 years. I, I was an offcumbent in a way, yeah, you know, I okay. came into this and it took a long time before I was accepted. Yeah. And to me, they were my family because I didn't have any close family nearby. And that's how I look upon Lily and Albert, you know, it's, yeah. it's really my family as it were. Bradford, this decline in Judaism in Bradford is obviously exceedingly sad because at one time, I think the wool trade may not have survived without the Jews. Maybe that's a bit exaggerated. But a lot of Jewish people were involved in the textile industry. We had, in fact, joined the Orthodox Synagogue and we were members there for years. Mm. In the meantime, I did six months postgraduate study in London. Then I went into the army, fortunately, as a dentist mm. during my national service. Um, 
whilst there was a way, uh, one or two families in the Reform Synagogue uh, got friendly with my parents and suggested that as the synagogue had few members and was in danger of closing down, um, Bradford, sorry. In 19, early 1950s, Bowland Street. Yes. Right. Um, w would they not like to join Bowland Street? And uh, eventually they said yes. I wasn't so keen. Yeah. Uh, but um, on the Rosh Hashanah, after I came out of the army, we we walked to synagogue, a distance of about two miles. Now, I, I would have liked to continue being a member of the Orthodox, but my parents were already members of the Reform. And as we walked along Manningham Lane, there came a point, I realised, where my parents were going to turn right and I was going to go a little bit further on, turn left to the Orthodox. And I had to make up my mind by a particular lamppost what I was going to do. And I decided to go with my parents to, in, into Boland Street and became a yeah. member there. there. There were obviously differences. Uh, yeah. And eventually I got used to it. One of the first things was that uh, one of the older members, Mr. Arnsberg, who had a, a jewellery shop in the centre of Bradford, Merton Arnsberg, yes, he asked me to be in charge of funerals because he'd done it for very many years and uh, he thought he would divest himself of this particular task, mm. which I took on, not knowing anything about funerals or how to set about it, but he. He told me what to do and what to say and uh, to arrange things. Mm. So I've been doing that um, ever since then, 1953 to 2013. 60, 60 years. So that's uh, 60 years, is it? In fact, I, 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 I would at first only arrange for funerals and get uh, ministers or rabbis to take a funeral, but uh, for one particular funeral, the Rabbi whom I had arranged to come uh, didn't come. Right. Uh, so I asked the bereaved people if they minded if I took the funeral and they had, they had no choice because there was no rabbi. So I took my first funeral uh, ever since then I've taken funerals, mm -hmm. all of them except when I've been away on holiday or whatever. I think I held every position on the council except secretary. I was treasurer for a while, I was chairman, but then relinquished both. Uh, but then as uh, there were fewer and fewer members of the synagogue mm. and fewer and fewer people who were willing to serve on the council, mm. I took over the treasurership and chairmanship for the second time. And I'm still stuck with the jobs. So yes, as a mitzvah yeah. and honour. Well, by, by a strange stroke of luck, I, I became the leader of the Jewish community in Bradford when last year uh, the Queen celebrated her, d her Diamond Jubilee and I was invited to a lunch in Shipley yeah. which was going to be attended by the Queen and Philip yeah. uh, and I was invited but I didn't know why I was invited particularly, it could have been for any number of reasons. Yeah. When I came to the place name on, on, on the table yeah. Uh, it said uh, Rudy Lever, a Jewish community of Bradford. Uh, so I realised that uh, somebody had nominated me to be uh, the the representative of the Jewish community. Although at that time there were still two two synagogues. Yeah. Well, it's a great honour, of course. Um, I suppose I'm carrying on the tradition of the family. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents were observant, uh, certainly kept a kosher household until they, until they died. Um, I, I personally don't eat uh, pig meat, um, but I go to synagogue if, as and when I can uh, and uh, carry out, I think, what uh, the Jewish precepts are. It, it so happens that um, the relationship between the Orthodox and the Reform synagogues in Bradford was, has always been very good. And, and uh, members of either synagogue have sometimes visited the other one. Yeah. I've been a relatively frequent visitor at, at services of the Orthodox synagogue mm -hmm. um, and, and vice versa, yeah. which is fairly unique for Bradford, yeah, but with the Orthodox having 
close down, this situation no longer yeah. exists. Yeah. Well, there have been several attempts since the war yeah. uh, to merge the two synagogues, as you imply, mm. and it's always come to nothing. There were always a, a handful of orthodox people who objected vehemently yeah. against any coming together. It's easier to have a relationship with Christian and Muslim yeah. communities than, than with the orthodox or even ultra-orthodox. So uh, they, they don't recognize Reform Judaism, no. so there's no point in trying to establish relationships. Yes. Although, as I said earlier, the relationship between the Orthodox and the Reform in Bradford has always been very good. I think you wanted to ask me about changes I'd seen in Bradford, and I can mention, certainly mention one of them, okay. uh, and that is that um, the method of heating, as I mentioned earlier, in houses yeah. was by open fireplaces, wh which was... Um, bad because most of the heat escaped up the chimney mm. and it caused a lot of soot yeah. which would settle on all walls inside houses and outside and certainly in Bradford I can't speak for other towns the uh, the walls the outside walls of houses and buildings were black mm. from centuries of soot yeah. and fog that would settle on the walls and one by one in the 1960s uh, firms started cleaning uh, the outside walls with uh, jet-powered yeah. steam and our, our synagogue in Bonacy was jet black as well was it? and uh, my mother had the good idea wouldn't it be good to steam clean the outside of the the walls of the synagogue right. and, and the council agreed and uh, it revealed the uh, cream and pink striation of the synagogue, which we had no idea was there. I hope that I'm doing some good mm. in, in, in keeping the synagogue alive, which, um, like in the 1930s and 50s, were short of members. We're short of members now. Uh, and um, if I can keep the synagogue alive, uh, it, it, it'll, it'll be of some comfort to me. We've established a group of people called Friends of the Synagogue mm. who pay a small amount each month or perhaps once a year uh, who help uh, financially, which, which is a very good thing. Um, and uh, we hope to get uh, grants from different funds, including the Heritage Lottery Fund. Mm. Uh, and if we manage that, then uh, we, 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 should, we should be able to, to repair what needs to be repaired in the synagogue.